Welcome back to Russ Recaps. In today's video, I'm going to recap a documentary television series that features true events of individuals caught in life-threatening scenarios and their amazing survival story. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. 22-year-old Benedict Allen's passion was to become an adventurer. His father was a test pilot and his biggest inspiration Benedict reveals that as a child he read stories about El Dorado, a mythical land of gold, and was convinced that he was eventually going to discover the place. So for his first adventure, he traveled to the greatest wilderness on the planet, the mighty Amazon rainforest. Benedict's companion throughout his venture is a stray dog named Cashew, who he befriended along the way. He also heavily relied on two local guides to help him survive. The guides taught him how to hunt and feel comfortable out in the wild. They continued their journey for around three months and went deep into the forest, aware of the fact that they might encounter dangerous, illegal miners at any point. As night approached, they looked for a place to sleep and stumbled across a settlement. Moments later, Mendez and his group showed up and offered to take them to El Dorado. Benedict hesitantly agrees. As the night continues, he can't sleep and has an ominous feeling that all is not well. Benedict sneaks out to check up on his supplies when he overheard Mendez talking about killing him and getting rid of his body. But somehow he managed to flee. Soon the realization hits him that he is now stranded in over two million square miles of rainforest with no help at all. So after paddling for about an hour, Benedict stopped. All he could think of is that he needs to get out or else his life is over. The next morning, Benedict estimates that his supplies are going to last him two weeks, while he also had a mosquito net and a hammock. He started paddling upriver to search a route out of the uncharted waters. Suddenly there were rapids, but Benedict managed to push himself out of there. It's day three now, and no sign of the trail. After clearing a few more rapids, he continued to search for a way out. With no warning, a massive rapid hit and shattered the canoe and everything ended up in the water. Benedict was gagging, trying to breathe. He pulls himself out of the water, but now he has virtually lost all of his supplies and his dog, Cashew. He was devastated. Is he now going to starve to death or die slowly of malaria or other diseases? He dived back into the water and recovered some of his supplies, although his only possible way out was to walk on foot. And so Benedict started walking into the world's largest and most deadliest rainforest. Soon Benedict realized that walking is way more difficult, so he decided to keep a track of the distance he covers. During the days, Benedict fought his way through the dense jungle. But as night falls, he needs a place to stay, so he makes a shelter using the techniques his guides taught him. But he still has no way to keep himself dry or warm, and he's at a high risk of contracting malaria. Having been awake all night with mosquitoes and other insect bites all over his body, Benedict is losing his mind, but he resumed his hike as the sun came up. He could barely cover four of the 100 miles, and it's been almost four days since he last ate. So he started building traps to catch any animal at all but waiting was tiring. Benedict believes that all the animal species in the jungle either know how to survive or they're dead already, and he's going to be one of them. Searching for food and water was exhausting, let alone the loneliness was killing him inside. Benedict managed to cross 25 miles in about 11 days. All that he's eaten is tips of ferns that are not enough nourishment. That's when he came across a tree with fruit. He remembered how the guides used the berries to create a nourishing mush, and he did the same. But unfortunately, Benedict was too weak to digest it and puked. Despite being sick, he kept moving forward until he realized that he was succumbing to malaria, his greatest fear. At this point, he's certain that he's going to die. He was disappointed and felt defeated. His progress became slower as the fever kicked in. He started hallucinating. At one point, he got a feeling that something has been stalking him. Benedict was freaking out, 
so he fired a few distress flares, but then, out of the blue, Cashew came running towards him, and it gave him a ray of hope. Days went by, and it's the twentieth day now. Benedict has walked seventy miles through the dense forest, but his condition has gotten critical from starvation and malaria. Parched, he found a puddle of dirty water and drank from it, along with Cashew. By day twenty-four, walking became much harder. Benedict's brain began to shut down, and death was very near, so he had no choice but to kill the dog and eat the meat. Yet again, his body is too weak and rejected the food. Day 28 approached. Benedict was so weak and collapsed a few times, but he kept moving until he saw a branch that appeared to be cut by a human. He then saw a few more. He realizes it's finally the edge to the outside world. It was very overwhelming. He walked a little further and saw a hut and a farmer with a look of horror after seeing him, and that was his last memory before he collapsed on the ground. The farmer recognized the symptoms of malaria and looked after him for three days, until he was taken to a hospital, where he made a full recovery and returned back home a week later. That's all for today. Please subscribe to see more videos like this, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.